passcode. So anyway, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and call the meeting to order. This is uh, Greenwood Police Merit Commission. This is Thursday, March 11th, 2021. And I have 5.05 PM. Roll call, please. Commissioner Brogan. Here. Commissioner Sherman. Here. Commissioner Treach. Here. Commissioner, Commissioner Walker. Here. Attorney Linda Meyer. Here. Right now we have absent Commissioner McQueen. Also present is Chief of Police James Eisen and Recording Secretary Misty Etuarte. Okay, well, we will look at the minute meetings. Well, first of all, we'll do February 11th, 2021. Has everyone had a chance to review them? Yes. 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 Any comments, corrections? If not, do I hear a motion to approve February 11th minutes? Tom Brogan makes a motion. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> Okay, now we'll uh, look to approve the minutes from the special session that was held on March 3rd, 2021. Is there any additions, corrections? I'll make a motion to approve. I second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, old business, I have none. Anybody have anything for old business? New business, I have none. Business from the floor. I don't know that anybody else is out there. Okay, uh, anything from the attorney? I have none. From the chief. Yeah, just a few updates on our uh, two hiring processes. Um, the lateral process is uh, running pretty well. Uh, the detectives have had most of the applicants in and began their background uh, investigation. Um, unfortunately, uh, we're gonna have to have an executive session uh, prior to the next meeting. Um, but uh, the, uh, the plan for this process is just to give you a timeline is to have all of the backgrounds done by April 1st. Then we will start scheduling them for their per physicals and psychologicals during the month of April. Um, hopefully we'll have all that done by mid-May and my plan, and I see no reason that it won't happen, uh, is to bring them on the first week of June. Um, the second process, the traditional process that we just started, uh, we, as of this morning, have 100 applicants that have uh, uh, filled out pre-application screening. Um, the physical agility test is set for 8 a.m. on April the 17th. The written test, uh, I've got, I still have to get confirmed with IPSP, but uh, we're wanting to do that on May the 15th, and the location is still to be determined. Uh, um, we need to figure out how many we're going to have total uh, so that we can find a facility to accommodate that. And it's probably going to depend on where we are with the COVID situation. Um, after that, uh, we're looking at maybe oral interviews sometime in June uh, with you, uh, with the commission. And then uh, I'm hoping um, to have this process wrapped up by early, uh, early fall. So the plan is to have all eight positions filled one way or another by uh, the end of the year. Um, and that is all that I have. Are you anticipating any more openings by the end of the year that you know of? No. No. Okay. We've got a few that are, uh, we've got one that I know is in the Marshall's process. I talked to uh, the head of uh, our marshal's task force uh, last week, um, he informed me that they're just starting to get uh, ramping back up with their hiring. Uh, they postponed everything due to COVID. So um, he is actually finishing the academy uh, the first week of April. So I don't know now that he's finished the academy, if he's going to want to go back to another federal academy or, or stick or be happy where he is. So um, 
we've got another one that is also in the Homeland Security process, uh, Department of Homeland Security. And um, I'm, I'm thinking that he um, is going to stay with us, but um, we won't know until that offer is made. So uh, there's a possibility we could lose two. I, I, I don't think we will. Okay. Hope not. Chief, um, what, what is the status with the uh, police academy as far as training? Have they opened up full time yet? And what's the wait list on that? Yeah, so the current academy class that we uh, have two in, uh, they started back up in February. Uh, the first four weeks were virtual, and then they brought, it, brought them all back. So um, I think it's probably the next class starts late April. Um, I would guess that how they run that's going to depend on where we are with the COVID situation. I don't know that they've determined if they're going to do uh, partial virtual or not. Have they caught up though so there's not the wait list to even get new hires in? Uh, yeah, I think uh, we're good because we we only have two left that need the academy and they're scheduled to go in that class. Okay. And obviously the, the, the lateral uh, applicants will not need the academy. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, anybody else have anything for the chief? Tom's got a couple of uh, questions. Uh, I think it was kind of referred to the one you just asked. I was worried about the lateral transfers that would that affect any of our people moving to another department? Jim, I know they're not going to talk to you about it, but do you think that's an issue? No, I don't think so. Uh, okay. We don't we don't typically lose officers to other local agencies. Uh, mm -hmm. The two that we have um, in other processes right now are both federal agencies. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, the second thing I have to say is the, uh, I was very, very pleased with the quality of the uh, candidates that we had on the interview and presentation on that. And then the third question I got, this may not related to anything that we do, but could you tell me a little bit about this Lexi poll that you signed up for and, and what's it going to be doing for us? Yeah, absolutely. So Lexipol is uh, the gold standard in policy writing for uh, public safety. Um, to give you the Reader's Digest version. Here's something I found on the web. According to <laughs> My Alexa didn't like something I said. Um, the way it works is they have a team of policy writers and lawyers that basically specialize in um, Indiana criminal code and um, the best practices for law enforcement nationwide. So every week, we started this in November, every week they send us five policies to review. It's the policy, so they have taken, they have taken our policies and merged them with theirs to um, basically make a custom fit I go over the policies, then I send it to people throughout the agency that have expertise on those subjects, such as firearms, defensive tactics, EVOC. Um, I, I consulted with the uh, child abuse investigator for the child abuse policy and how we handle that. Uh, they give me their um, opinions. I'll go in and make um, corrections or amendments to the policy send those policies back to our uh, account representative. They have the lawyers go over it uh, as long as it's all within, um, all up to par legally, uh, it goes into building our manual. So the manual, once it's done, will have approximately between 150 and 175 policies. And once we get it all compiled, um, we'll send it to the Board of Works for uh, approval, and then we'll start issuing it to the officers. The really good thing about Lexapol is uh, really twofold. Uh, it's their responsibility to uh, keep up with our policies and, and maintain our policy manual. So they are constantly updating and making revisions as the laws change or best practices change. So typically the legislature passes uh, uh, statute revisions uh, that take effect July 1st of each year. When, when a change to the law occurs, 
Lexapol goes in and revises our policy automatically, and then they push it to the officers through an app on their laptop and their smartphones. So every officer will get a push that that policy has changed or been revised. They read the policy and they have to acknowledge that they understand the policy. And then that documentation goes into their training file. The other thing that they do is they uh, offer um, daily training briefs. So every day that an officer logs on for duty, there'll be a scenario-based policy question pop up on their computer. And they have to read that question and answer it um, correctly before you know they can they can go forward. And then once they uh, once they answer it correctly, it counts as a training. And that specific question or policy and training session goes into their training file. So it basically just uh, con confirms and documents that the officers understand the policy and can apply it practically. Do you see any disciplinary issues that might be involved in this if they do not follow a protocol or, or policy process? I'm just getting, I'm just estimating and, and thinking ahead. No, no different than no different than uh, what we do now. I mean they're yeah. required to uh, you know abide by our policy. Um, if you're asking about the learning curve, yeah. Uh, no, because most <laughs> of most of the policies aren't changing dramatically, um, and they're going to constantly be refreshed. And that's something that's different than now. Uh, typically, you know, our officers look at policies two times uh, throughout their careers, and that's when they get hired and when they get in trouble. So now <laughs> it's going to be a daily routine where they have to constantly stay refreshed and up to date. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. All right, Th thank you very much. That's all I wanted to know. You're welcome. Any, anyone else? <clears throat> I, I want to applaud uh, Jimmy for uh, taking the initiative to do this thing with Lexapol. I think that's going to be important for our department, you know, in the future. Uh, I, I think he's done a great thing here. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, I mean, when you when you think about the the high stakes when it comes to liability in this profession, um, the small price of doing this right up front is uh, dropping the bucket. Yeah, I've been involved in that. I know yeah. the price that can be have to be paid for the mistakes well, that the officers make. And honestly, it gives me a peace of mind as the out as the chief. Um, that our policies are up to date and you know have that Lexapol stamp. Um, and I think that's gonna go a long way when it comes to tort claims and, and, and legal issues uh, when um, attorneys see that uh, you know, we're abiding by the Lexapol uh, standards, then um, they know that we're doing things the right way. Are there any local departments that are already using it? Do you oh, know? Yes, many. Uh, uh, Terre Haute, uh, Beach Grove, Zionsville, uh, I believe Hancock County uh, or Hendricks County. Um, I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, but there, there, there are several. Okay. Anything else? Okay. How about uh, claims? I have a claim in the amount of $333 for Attorney Myers' services for the month of February and approval for the per diems in the amount of $300 for the commissioners for two executive meetings, one special meeting, and tonight's regular meeting. Okay, I make a motion I also... we, uh, I'll make a motion we pay for the claims. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, then I also got the bill today from IPSP for the lateral procedure, and that bill is twenty nine hundred dollars. I make so a I motion see. we pay for the uh, expenses of IPSP. A second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
I will just tell you uh, the written test. It's a flat fee for your first 30. So I realized we only had eight and the uh, oral interviews. It's a flat fee for the first 20. So, you know, that's, that's how they bill is by increments. So even though we only had eight, we go by those minimums. So that explains that bill. Uh, okay. And it's, it's worth it for the, um, um, because it's a neutral process and just like how the LexiPro is good to protect the department from later challenges, this is also a good expense, I think. Okay. I agree with that, Martha. Yeah, until someone can devise a better system, uh, you know, I think I think it works. Uh, any other comments from commission members? From the floor? Mayor, do you have anything? I do not. Just thank you very much for what you're doing. Okay, well, thanks for attending. Uh, if there's nothing else, I'll hear a motion to adjourn. I'll and make a motion. motion. Okay, one of you. I'll make a motion we adjourn. Okay, I'll is there second. a second? Okay, second. my second. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we're adjourned. Just Mike, look forward to, pardon? Mike, I'll get a hold of you after uh, Misty emails those per diems out so you so I can stop by and have you sign those minutes. Okay. And I'll just make the one trip. So if you wanna, I'll, I'll text you, but if you wanna just okay. hang on to your per diems, I'll just take them when I take everything to her. All right, I, I took a per diem over to the department the other day. I hope Misty got it. I'm thinking she did. I got it. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, if nothing else, I guess I'll see you next month on April 8th. Yes. And right. it was so right. funny was I had clicked to join and I was in a meeting of one. And I thought, where's everybody? Well, and then I got your your text. So I, and I had I was early and still oh well. Yeah, the IT guy said you tried to sign on, but it was like January's meeting, he said. Oh no. So well, I, I don't there. that's why I sent you the ID yes. and the code again. But I thought I'm gonna start from scratch. Okay. All right. Well, you you made it. The only thing we I think approved for you got here was were the minutes. Uh, 